<laughs> it is now 5 p.m., March 19, 2019, and I call to order the regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville. In the City Council, seating is the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, the Victorville Water District, and the city is housing assets uh, successor. May we have roll call, please? Council Member Cox? Here. Council Member Gomez? Present. Council Member Jones? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Ramirez? <coughs> Mayor Garcia? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Ramirez, absent. <coughs> This is the time and place for the general public to address the City Council on any item listed or not listed on the agenda per Government Code Section 54954.3. State law prohibits the Council from addressing any issues not previously included on the agenda. The Council may receive testimony and set the matter to a subsequent uh, meeting. I do not see anyone in the audience that would like to address the Council. Therefore, can we have declaration of closed session items by our city attorney, please? Thank you, Mayor Garcia. We have only one item this evening for the city council. It is real property negotiations pursuant to government code 54956.8. The property location and designation is set forth on the agenda. The negotiating parties are Mr. Metzler on behalf of the city and the San Bernardino County Flood Control District. Thank city you. City sense reportable action. We report it either at the conclusion of the closed session or at the commencement of the six o'clock meeting. Thank you. Uh, we will now recess to our closed session and we will recess. It is now 5.59. We will be starting. Please take your seats. It is now uh, 6 o'clock, March 19, 2019, and I call to order the regular meeting of the City Council of the City of Victorville. In the City Council seating is the Library Board of Trustees, Southern California Logistics Rail Authority, Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, successor agency to the Victorville Redevelopment Agency, the Victorville Joint Powers Financing Authority, the Victorville Water District and the city is housing as its successor. Uh, may we have roll call please? Council Member Cox? Here. Council Member Gomez? Present. Here. Sorry. Council Member Jones? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Ramirez? Mayor Garcia? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Ramirez, absent. Uh, may we have closed session announcements by our city attorney, please? Thank you, Mayor Garcia. We only had one item this evening. It was real property negotiations for the city council pursuant to government code 54956.8. The parties to the negotiation and the property is <coughs> set forth on the agenda. At this time, there is no reportable action with respect to that item. Thank you. Uh, we, this evening, we do not have any proclamations or special presentations. Um, I will ask our city clerk to present the agenda to council and any revisions to the agenda. We'll do the invocation oh, I'm first. sorry, I skipped my, you're right, I skipped over. Um, at this time, we will have the invocation, and it will be delivered by um, Father Jude 
of St. Joan of Arc, and uh, the Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Police Chief Rick Bessinger, so please stand. In God we trust, therefore let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for every blessing that you have showered upon us, and also our beloved city, Victorville. I pray for our mayor, for the various level of city officials, and in particular for this assembled council. I am asking that you would graciously grant them wisdom to govern amid the conflicting interest on the issue of our times, a sense of the welfare and true needs of our people, a keen thirst for justice and righteousness, confidence in what is good and fitting, the ability to work together in harmony even when there is honest disagreement, personal peace in their lives and joy in their task. I pray for the agenda set before them today. Please give an assurance of what would please you and what would benefit those who live and work in and around our beloved city of Victorville. It is in your most blessed name I pray. May God bless us all. Amen. And I will start again. Uh, this evening, we do not have any proclamation or special presentations. Um, and I will ask our city clerk to please present the agenda to council and any revisions to the agenda. The city council of the city of Victorville welcomes the public's participation in tonight's meeting. Anyone wishing to speak during public comment or on a particular item will be required to fill out a white speaker card located in the council chamber's lobby and give it to the city clerk. The mayor will call upon each individual who has submitted a speaker card. Comments are to be limited to three minutes per individual or less as deemed necessary by the mayor. All communications are to be addressed directly to the city council, not to the members of the audience. In accordance with state law, the city council may not discuss or take action on any non-agenda items. The council may receive testimony and set the matter to a subsequent meeting. Any person or group who interferes with the conduct of a city council meeting by interrupting and or disrupting the meeting is subject to removal. A peace officer may be requested to assist with the removal should any person or group fail to comply with an order of removal by the presiding officer. Any person or group who resists removal by a peace officer is subject to arrest and prosecution. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. At this time... Um, Before you go on, I have a question on conflict of interest, if I might, Madam Mayor. Yes. On the item that's coming up, there will be a public hearing, and that public hearing has uh, on three items, three resolutions. I don't have any problems on SCLA and the Water District, and I don't think I have a problem on Resolution 19010 because in reading this, it's a confirmation of what City Council has previously approved. Uh, but I want to ask, since it does mention the golf course, if I have a conflict on, on that first item. I would recommend when we get to that item that you actually recuse yourself with respect to that portion of the discussion that has anything to do with the golf course item. There is a line item related to the, in the budget there related to the golf course. So what I would recommend the council do is have a discussion on, on that item first with the exclusion of any discussion at all related to anything on the golf course, and then after we take action on that item, we can have a separate discussion on those two items that relate to the golf course with Mr. Cox being absent. No, I don't have any problems, so I, I didn't want to have a public hearing where I didn't hear two-thirds of the hearing. Right. Right. All right, I'll wait till she opens. I'll wait till we get to the end. Thank you. Okay, so we're um, on item B1, public hearings. And again, I would request that any discussion of anything related to the golf course be um, withheld at this time until after we've taken action on the item, and then we could have discuss any of those items related to the golf course separately with Mr. Cox absent. 
Okay, and that's item uh, B1. B1. That is item B1. Okay. So, do you take a motion of the council to separate those two since it's scheduled as a public hearing for all three resolutions? If you'd like to make a motion, that'd be appropriate. Um, it'd be appropriate for me to make the motion? No, it'd be appropriate for somebody else to make that motion. Ms. Jones, you want to make the motion? Oh, um. The motion would be to bifurcate the discussion on item B1 to take all the discussion related to the golf course and act on that separately. Well, there we go. So moved. You need a second? Need a second. second. Motion by Councilmember Jones, seconded by Mayor Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries with Uh, so we are on public hearings. Item B1, a public hearing to hear arguments for and against mid-year amendments to the 2018-2019 fiscal year budget. Uh, Madam Clerk, read the recommendation. That the City Council and Board of Directors approve the changes reflected in this agenda item and its attachments by adopting resolution number 19-010 a resolu resolution of the City Council of the City of Victorville amending resolution number 18-061 as amended. The budget resolution for the City of Victorville for fiscal year 2018-2019 related to an appropriation of funds increasing the expenditures by $13,608,199 and increasing the revenues by $6,749,298 in adopting the amended table of organization fixing the rates in compensation. Resolution number SCLAA 19-002, a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Southern California Logistics Airport Authority, amending resolution SCLAA 18-002 as amended the budget resolution for the Southern California Logistics Airport Authority for fiscal year 2018-2019 related to an appropriation of funds increasing the expenditures by $684,677 and reducing the revenues by $183,997. And resolution number VWD 19-001, a resolution of the Board of Directors of the Victorville Water District, amending resolution number VWD 18-009 as amended, the budget resolution for the Victorville Water District for fiscal year 2018-2019 relating to an appropriation of funds increasing the expenditures by $249,294 and reducing the revenues by $475,000. Thank you. At this time, uh, council members, uh, <clears throat> if you have any questions of staff, and I will start with um, council member Jones. I have uh, none at this time, thank you. Thank you. Well, before my time starts, I need clarification to what just happened. There was a motion to bifurcate. Um, there was three votes. He wasn't able to vote on that one, and it just all of a sudden became me overhearing the city attorney saying, we're still going to bifurcate. So would you please explain what just happened? Because I'm under no understanding what happened with the motion. Carrie didn't go through. There's three people. He can vote. He's not here. So clarify that for me. Right, my understanding is there's a motion to bifurcate the discussion so that we have a discussion on the agenda items related to the golf course separate with Mr. Cox out of the room. We should probably handle that first since he's out of the room right now, although the public hearing should, for the purposes of the public, cover all of those items. Once Mr. Cox is back in the room, after we've had a vote on the golf course portion, we can discuss the other three uh, resolutions that are on the agenda. So you're saying that that motion passed? Yes. Okay. 3-1 vote. So. I would take, Madam Mayor, I'd take all comments related to all and questions related to all three items and then have a discussion separately on the golf course item first. Okay, very good. Um, so you didn't I have, have anything. anything. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ms. Gomez? Yeah, so um, did staff add resolution 8-061, SCLA resolution 18-002, and BWD 18-009? for references as to what appropriations and increases of revenues are being recommended. No, I didn't see them, but I was hoping that they were in there and I didn't, I don't believe I saw them. 
What, Madam Mayor and uh, City Council, the reference to um, those 2018 resolutions or, or reference being made to the original resolutions that adopted the, the fiscal year budget back in, in May, or I'm sorry, back in June of 2018. Right, so just please be sure to add former resolutions and our information that assists the council with rational and informative voting decisions. Um, how, will, how will increasing the expenditures by a certain allotment and increasing the revenues by even lower amounts create such increases by these allotted monies? So if you read this, you'd know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, if you need to refer to the resolutions before you respond to my questions, you can go ahead and please take a moment. I'm gonna go ahead for the next question. Is there a reason why staff couldn't compensate the res couldn't add the compensations, the resolutions, and the pay rate schedule in different agendas? And I think that's what the motion was earlier. I would like to see this in future um, agendas to have it literally where we can vote on each item rather than having everything together, so that we don't have to have something like. Mr. Cox missed some of the information or me thinking, well, can I talk about the golf course right now or can I not? Because I'm not being cued myself. So it would really assist if we could have that already from staff providing information, knowing that something like this is gonna take into account. And when did the city start looking for the homeless coordinator position? Was it an internal or an, an external hire? Please provide me with the information as to the hiring requirements, times and dates. I can speak to the first question. The second question, I think, is more um, the preference of the council as to whether or not it wants us to start bifurcating these items and separating them out. And then I can also answer the homeless uh, recruitment. Um, so speaking to the first item, and I think the uh, notation there or the comment there was more speaking to the fundamental difference in um, the change in revenue versus expenditure and, and there does appear just in the recommendations and even in the resolution that there's an imbalance uh, just looking at those two numbers um, between the revenue and expenditure but certainly where you have expenditures uh, being increased and revenues being decreased uh, typically you'd rely on fund balance or unencumbered fund balance which uh, would would be akin to the cash available uh, so in that, that that would be the case in uh, the airport uh, given its access to the line of credit uh, and then also the same as the case with the water district as it has cash reserves uh, for both operations maintenance and capital so those are likely sources to satisfy uh, that difference as to pulling out the org uh, table of orgs certainly if the council so chooses to pull that out we can uh, treat that as a completely separate item but it's very traditional that that's uh, accompanied with the budget document itself and then finally with respect to the homeless solutions coordinator position that's not something that has been solicited yet it's not been marketed yet for recruitment um, we could not do so until such a time that the table of org was approved and the budget was approved uh, allowing for that position to be created uh, but the job description is something that we have drafted and it's something among those items we've been working on since um, oh gosh since January I suspect um, times flying uh, when we were directed to start forming the task force and this was one of those items that we identified as likely necessary as necessary if we're to uh, tackle the, the homelessness um, solutions in a, in a leadership capacity okay and um I have several questions that I have made copies of, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and give it to Mr. Metzler so I can have responses. You have 30 seconds. And I also have a copy of all the questions that I asked that I'm gonna ask the city clerk to make a part of today's archive. So if anybody in the audience wants to ever pull it and see what kind of questions we're asking, we're limited in time. That way you at least have the questions in writing. You can always pull them out in the archive for today's date. There are no other questions. <clears throat> so being specific to the item that I think we're voting on first uh, with the absence of Council Member Cox, um, the, the item that we're uh, focused on um, is those that relate to the golf course or the golf course fund. Um, I think the easiest way to describe um, uh, that particular item is that largely 
uh, they're correcting entries, uh, cor correcting, um, yeah, correcting entries uh, involving the interfund loans from the sanitary fund to the general fund uh, to satisfy, um, I'm sorry, strike that, from Vemus to the general fund to the sanitary fund. And one step that we missed was to include having the golf course fund, I believe it's fund 400, uh, don't quote me on that, um, because the loan that existed uh, between golf and uh, sanitary was uh, the fund 400. We missed that step in the original budgeting, so effectively what this item is doing is correcting those entries so that the, uh, the, the actual funds paid back from Bemis that was owed from Bemis to the general fund, general fund then was able to satisfy the golf course loan uh, by uh, using that money to pay back the sanitary fund, which was propping up the, the golf course deficiency for many, many years. So that's the biggest part of it. Uh, my, my notes tell me, and I'll allow Deputy City Manager uh, Harris to correct me, but my notes are telling me that of uh, the 13.6 uh, million, 13 and a half million are correcting entries. Um, the, the other entry, I'm sorry, the other item involving the golf course is approximately $47,000. Uh, on the operating side, I think it's page 37 is what uh, Mr. Harris was telling me. Uh, and that would be the only item dealing with the operational element of the golf course. So uh, that would be an actual expenditure. That'd be a cash uh, issue. Uh, everything else is um, more of a correcting entry issue, non-cash. Thank you. So may I follow up on that, Madam Mayor? Thank you. So. Um, just to make sure that everyone's really clear that on the um, the journal entries regarding the, the golf fund, the $6,600, that's just merely to make sure that the posting of the accounts are, are showing proper, properly. There's no cash involved. It's just a correcting journal entry. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, there was uh, one, one thing we did not clean up was fund 400, which was the actual golf course fund, was the owing party to this to the sanitary fund and and that's what we're cleaning up great thank you thank you madam mayor i do not have any uh, speaker cards it'll be appropriate just to open the public hearing to see if anybody would like to speak okay at this time i open the uh, public hearing and i do not have any speaker cards therefore i close the uh, public hearing and at this time, I request a motion and a second to adopt the resolution number. Mayor, if I might, it'd be better right now, based on Mr. Metzler's presentation, just to have a vote on those two golf course issues that he just addressed. So it would be to approve the line item correction on the golf course and the appropriation of the $48,000 so that we can then consider the resolution without any discussion about the golf course. So if that could be a motion to approve those two items, that's what we'd be looking for at this point. Okay, the motion will be just for those two items, and, and that was for 47000 It was for about, yeah, I believe the line 000. item is... 41? 31. Oh. 47. We'll give you the exact amount. The exact amount is an increase for $46,002.42. 42? 40. I'm not hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. So the page reference is page 31 of the staff report and the actual dollar amount is $42,002.42. Request to increase the contract services. 46. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay, the motion would be 40, to... I'm sorry, 46,000... dollars and 42 cents. And 42 cents. Numbers are small. Okay. So I'm happy to uh, make a motion. All right, so I move that um, with regard to the golf card, excuse me, golf course issues that we approve the line item journal entries, um, making sure that the uh, original numbers were posted to the correct accounts and also appropriate an additional $46,002.42. I second. Motion by Councilmember Jones, seconded by Mayor Garcia. Any further comments? Yes. Um, and it's not related just specifically to that. So my comment is, 
and you can correct me after I say this, because the layman person would read this just as I am reading it. So you can correct me later, but I want to make sure I'm saying what I need to say based on my interpretation. So the city manager is receiving $16,000 in travel plus car allowance. He sits as a delegate making over half a quarter million and has opened a position of over $75,000 to do what the city council dele delegated him to do. How many cities have two public information officers or an assistant to the assistant? The city manager has two city assistants and two more assistants do to I help have the his. Right to call Madam Mayor, may I call for the orders of the day? Uh, the discussion at this point should be confined to the motion on the table. There's right. a comment. We're allowed to, by policy, go it to It needs comment. to be confined to the motion pending. Oh, I see. That is correct. It should relate just to the golf course issues at this point. Well, this Your discussion can occur. Should be, would be a this is going to talk to about the golf course, but if I if I can say when Mr. Cox is here, I mean I'm. Well, if you have comments about problem. the golf course, that'd be appropriate. We're not discussing anybody's wages or anything. We're discussing. I can comment rate. about this whatever I want, not what you want me to discuss. Okay, so I'll look. There's something here that I can talk to about that. I don't, I mean, it talks about golf course tax abatement and incentives. Th I mean, if that's illegitimate when he's here, that's the only thing I'm going to say about the golf course. Keith, do you know what that's about? The tax abatement for the golf course I'm not familiar with. Can you? Right. That's why I said if I can either say it all and he's here and it's not a problem, I will. But I'm being curtailed to narrow what, what, what I on? need to speak on. No, no, that's that's me. That's me making an analogy to what's happening. So that's why I said it's not necessarily that regard. So I can say that when he's here, it's not a big deal. Well, again, the motion on the floor relates to the funding of golf course issues. So if you have comments related to the golf course, absolutely appropriate at this time. If there's other comments related to the rest of the budgetary items. We're going to handle that next, so it'd be appropriate to have those comments. Okay, so at that when time. I say golf course tax abatement and incentives, that's what I'm going to be saying, whether that, you feel it's that, appropriate. That actually or not. should be fine because, okay. again, we're not taking any action on that item. Works. So we have a motion and a second on the floor. I have a motion by Councilmember Jones, seconded by Mayor Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. So that motion fails. So now we should move on to the rest of item B1 and we can have Mr. Cox rejoin the discussion. For the benefit of the public, the reason that motion fails is we need three votes when it's a budgetary item. Correct, and so may I ask a question, Madam Mayor? Thank you, so then is the correct, it seems to me that we, we, we're legally bound to make correcting journal entries, et cetera. So are, at this point, do we venture to bring this back to the next agenda when we have another council member present that, that right. could conceivably? I okay. believe staff plans to do that. And my reason for voting no is for legitimate reasons. You go out, we spent $1.2 million, 666000 goes by the wayside. And I don't think it's fair that we continue to subsidize the golf course. All right, now we are on the remainder of item B1, which is the three resolutions before you. Okay. Again, we are on resolution number SCLA A19-002. Correct, along with the resolution B B VWD19001 and Resolution of the City Council 19010. Okay, very good. And again, the discussion at this point is exclusive of any discussion on any of things related to the golf course funding. Uh, is there any discussion from you, uh, Council Member Jones? Thank you, Madam Mayor. No. Uh, did you have any discussion on these uh, additional items? Uh, yes, I did. I, I opened the public hearing. Uh -huh. I don't have any questions. Uh, Ms. Gomez? My questions were all relayed in the packet that I gave to the city manager. Very well. I do not have any speaker cards, therefore I'm close. I had already, uh, no, I'll close the public hearing at this time. And um, 
I need a motion and a second for the uh, additional two items. Is that uh, the three items again with the understanding that with respect to the uh, city council items, resolution, really. uh -huh. it does not relate to the golf course. Okay, very good. Get a motion. Yes, Madam Mayor, so I move that the council and boards of directors take action in accordance with the recommendations posted on the agenda, uh, accepting any matters related to the golf course. Second. Motion by Council Member Jones, seconded by Mayor Garcia. Any further comments? Yes. I was under the impression there was going to be a public hearing on the first item and then held the other two separate and a public hearing, so you held the public hearing. I wasn't in the room. There were no thing I should know about. There were no comments in the public hearing at all. No comments at all. I have read this item and I have no questions on either one. Yeah. Thank you. Ms. Gomez, did you have anything else? Yes. So the city manager the city manager, Mr. Keith Mesler, is receiving sixteen thousand dollars in travel plus car allowance despite his monthly allowance of $20,000 a month, not a year, just so everybody knows. He sits at, as the delegate making over half a quarter million and has opened a position of over $75,000 to do what the city council delegated him to do, and I'm talking about the homeless solution coordinator. Uh, and he's a delegate, so he goes to the ICH meetings, so I just want that for the public to consume. How many cities have two public information officers or an assistant to the assistant? That's who we're, we're hiring and we're adopting the resolution. I it's unfortunate that no one spoke. From, uh, the, the city item. manager has two city assistants and two more to help his assistants, costing us over a million dollars. If that wasn't enough for your city taxpaying dollars, they're continuing to provide wealth fair to this administration. Wealth fair through your tax dollars continues giving certain administrative privileges and full-time wages of over a quarter million. Jim Cox about, asks about saving money but, not a, but doesn't approve the $1,200 for the year in travels for a council member, but turns a blind eye on the approximate half a million that the city attorney took in 2018. 2019, and that's in here. Council Member Jones, Mayor Garcia, both also turn a blind eye to the excessive costs. I, you should read this. I disagree with giving power to the city. Council regarding tuition reimbursement. If the council chooses not to allocate the funds necessary to continue the program in any particular fiscal year due to any budget constraints, we have to see how the priority is not for, we must see how we don't have a priority for our employees but for that golf course tax abatement and incentives that I was saying. I also disagree with the work week full time of non-safety employees continuing to be on furloughs. 10% of their work time that has resulted in 36 hour work weeks and a loss of 10% in compensation. I disagree with this golf fund clearly and with these items that, are, that have been packed. Madam Mayor, I do have comments. Thank you. So just so that the record is clear, I, I reviewed the budget quite um, extensively, did not find anything to be out of order on this. The types of things that our city manager um, participates in are typical to city managers across the state, um, including a salary and the other benefits and things that are offered to him in order to carry out um, the work that he has before him. As far as my taking a blind eye to any of the uh, numbers and representations in the uh, budget presented to the community, well, that is just patently false. I work very faithfully to make sure that I'm making decisions that are wise and discerning and in the best interests of our community. It's not in my nature to take a blind eye to any business of the city. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jones. I won't even attempt to defend myself because it's useless <laughs> and we have a <laughs> conflict here immediately. Madam Mayor, I uh, because we're dealing with the budget item, there there was certainly one um, one comment that Ms. Gomez made that's just patently wrong, um, grossly overstated, uh, especially when she was identified. She had had identified myself as receiving sixteen thousand dollars a month for travel, 
Um, I do not receive $16,000 a month for travel. My best guess that she, I mean, trying to assume what she uh, was meaning, there might be $16,000 for my entire departmental budget for the year, but certainly um, uh, my contract does not provide, uh, nor does the city compensate me, $16,000 a month for travel. Thank you for clarifying that. She should do a little more research before she starts. Page accusing. 29, it says CM, which is city manager, and it says travel and meetings, and it says 16,000. If you want to interpret it just like I did, that's why we have clarification from administration. But when I don't have to, I can't sit with them because they don't want to sit with me to clarify, I got to put it out there for all of us to know why this is happening, right? Can we continue and, with our meeting? And, and again, Madam Mayor, just so that the public is clear, um, what Councilmember Gomez is pointing to is actually speaking to the department, uh, not an individual. Uh, there is a department called the City Manager's Department uh, here in the organization, so that is actually a line item dealing with the annual expense, uh, budget expense for the department. Thank you. She just doesn't understand. Um, okay, we will continue on. I have a motion by Councilmember Jones, seconded by Mayor Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion passes with Ramirez being absent and Gomez voting no. Now we move on to consent calendar. And consent calendar item C1 through C8 may be approved with one motion. And this a council member request an item to be pulled for further uh, discussion. I'm pulling items C2, C4, and C8. C2 and what? 248. Madam Mayor, I have none to pull. I'm sorry, Ms. Jones. Thank you. I have none to pull. Thank you. I don't have any to pull. On that basis, I move approval of the consent calendar with the exception of C2, C4, and C8. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Cox, seconded by Councilmember Jones. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries with Ramirez being absent. So for item C2, which is Title II and Title 16, Title 16 in Chapter 5, uh, that's resolutions 2388 and 2389. My question is, who is the Director of Development currently? Was the Director of Development, of Development not doing his or her job? And to whose standard and who suggested to replace the Director of Development with the City Manager? Madam Mayor and members of the council, this item uh, involves a second reading of an ordinance and, and in fact at the very last meeting we had uh, some discussion regarding this, um, largely uh, talking about the accessory use um, uh, changes to the municipal code and uh, Title 16. We also um, identified how we took the opportunity to try to conform to that state law in cleaning up that particular code. We also cl uh, cleaned up other code sections. And there was uh, routinely throughout Title 16 uh, reference to a position called the development director. Um, we did reorganize um, about a year ago uh, some of the leadership and executive management structure of the organization. And in doing so, the director of development position uh, effectively was eliminated. The, s the roles and responsibilities got rolled into that of a newly created deputy city manager position, uh, but for the f sake of making this simple going forward and so as to also not circumvent the city manager's authority in, in some of the duties uh, and responsibilities provided in Title 16. Uh, we cleaned up this title. We were recommending, and the council approved at the last meeting, the, uh, the cleaning up of uh, the reference to the development code to become reference to the city manager. Thank you. Any other For questions? E well, now my questions are done, but now this is my comment. I'm very concerned about any manager giving himself more power to harass the public by displaying himself as code enforcement. I also worry about any manager giving himself the power to become the zoning administrator to approve land zones. 
that don't go to the planning commissioners. This change in Title 16, Chapter 6, Code Enforcement under Title 1, Administration and Code Enforcement takes the power away from the Director of Development to add himself forcefully to select and harass our community members. I personally have experienced code enforcement harassing my home and selectively receiving emails from former council member Ryan McAkron, by the way, the gym partner to Keith Messler at InShape, who have used his particular titles to harass the owners of the property where I'm currently residing today. I would be remiss if I did not put this type of behavior out in the open. Just this last election, we had candidate applicants running for office who faced the same antagonistic approach from our code, from our code enforcement division under Title 16, Development Code Chapter 6, Article 3, 5, under Article 23, Chapter 4, etc. This is very concerning to me. I ask that any public person who has a who has a visit from code enforcement, you, you can always seconds? reach out to me at 7-69-12-3190. Again, 7-69-12-3190, and I will continue to oversee the people's right despite continual opposition from this council and its, and its administration. And may I have a question to the city manager? Did you usurp the powers of the Planning Commission on zoning matters and <laughs> zone changes? No. Um, I should also uh, mention, um, and I failed to mention in my earlier um, description of this matter, um, it does um, identify the city manager as replacing the development director's uh, previous uh, position of authority, uh, but it also provides for the city manager to delegate a designee um, so as to the concern about um, the potential use of harassment, which is, I think, fairly extreme. There's no mention of that in this code. Um, the designated uh, individual responsible is the deputy city manager. That's a delegation that I have made. Uh, but so the, there's an ultimate responsibility. Um, the city manager's uh, title is what's been placed in the code. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's very common for the city council to hire a city manager and hire the city attorney. And it's very common for the city manager to be able to delegate and hire the department heads. The city council is not involved in that. And, uh, but if there are problems that people are having, I'd like to know about it too. Um, and the other thing, in regard to harassment, that's extremely serious charge. I'd like the council to approve uh, referring that matter directly to the attorney for an investigation to determine if such thing is existing, and if so, bring it back to the city council. And if not, then the city council needs to know also. I've been around a long time, and I have no one contacting me about uh, the city staff or the manager or anyone harassing anyone. Um, Sorry, but I don't know what you're talking about, Ms. Gomez, so, but that's serious. It, it's a serious charge, so do we want to make a motion and we want to name her as being the accuser here of uh, charges? Well, Are you going to be just, displaying the names? Because so far it's considered anonymous, whoever is harassing me with code enforcement, but it's already been revealed, so we know it's Aaron McEachern, the former who I unseated, that has really good control and really good communications with code enforcement. And you have been here for a long time. You were the city manager for over three decades. You went over two years for Apple Valley, managed over there, are here, our city attorney for 30 years. You can see the loyalties. Will there be any justice if there's investigation with it internally? What's of course there got, wouldn't. What's would, you want, would you want to do an external investigation so that it's not held within? If we need to, well, absolutely. You, well, that's a good motion that we charges. could make, right? Yeah, Something external so we don't have people from within doing the investigation, but it's external. We will investigate the council so I agree. Also. I, would, I would agree to that motion for someone externally to come in that's not dependent from anybody here, and we do that. But we want the council so I agree. also to be investigated. Yeah, of course. Thoroughly. Yeah, you too. Of course. Yeah. Uh, so I, I would actually, I'm for that motion. I actually make that motion. Well, this, you made the charge of harassment. And uh, therefore, I, I want the investigation. I'm going to second it because I want, and I have not, I listened to you carefully, and I have no idea what you were saying about Councilman McCracken, McCracken, who's not on the council, is not here, has nothing to do with the operations of the city. And I'd like a, the city clerk to provide a, uh, just a short printout of that so we can understand what that was about. So these are, we make charges against private citizens. I don't want this council 
end up in a lawsuit because it's not our charge to investigate it and make a determination as a basis to it. We have a responsibility to do something. If there's not, we have the responsibility probably to, to apologize stop. to Mr. McCarran. No, to stop. To you not make continue charges, it. You just stop. You've got to have some basis for it. You can't just you make it, charges. Yeah, as soon as you tell code enforcement to release the anonymity for that, you, we will have it. You can see the emails revealed. Mayor Gomez, if I might, Mayor Gomez, Mayor Garcia, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, if I might, I believe that Mr. Cox's motion was to have me do the investigation initially. I believe what right. Ms. Gomez is suggesting is a modification of that. So we should have a discussion first on the modification of the motion and see if there's a second. And I believe her motion was to have an external investigation. So I believe that is before the council right now. So the motion was made by Councilmember Gomez, seconded by Councilmember Cox. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Oh, hold on. Uh, yeah. So this, no, no, the modification is to use an outside agency. I, I don't recall having correct. heard a second on that. I, I have thought not we heard were a inviting well, a second. He seconded when he agreed. Council member, so. okay. All right. We, For an outside agency. Perhaps we should go back again. Yeah, and yeah you go back. And the motion that I understand it from Council Member Gomez is to have an external investigation on uh, allegations of harassment. Was there a second on that? I don't. Okay. Then you there change be your mind? No, no, no. I don't understand it that way at all. Okay. Ms. Gomez made, made accusations. Yes. I made the recommendation that the city attorney do an investigation. Right. That was my motion. Right. As I understand it, I don't know if there was a second or not, but I thought, I thought Ms. Gomez seconded it. She wants to have an outside agency. No. I may be for that, depending upon what we find out, but not at this point. That's hiring money, going out, and we don't even know if there's any basis for the complaint at this point. So I'll take the modified motion from Ms. Gomez. I did not second the yeah, modified okay. motion. Okay. Is there a second? There being no second, that motion dies. We should go back to internal. Council Member Cox's motion to have an internal investigation, and we're looking for a second on that. That is my motion. Second. And you're going to be providing all the documents so it's everybody can see the documentation and your type of investigation. Is that correct? That's typically what an investigation provides, yes. Is there a second? I second. Oh, you did? The motion made by Council Member Cox, seconded by Mayor Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All those opposed? I, I was an aye on that. Thank you. Excuse me? I was an aye. Okay. Motion carries with Councilmember Ramirez being absent. So C4 is satisfaction and release of lien for the Green Tree House area. So I've read the discussion report, the resolution, and the lien release. Please provide information from 1973 and 1974 how the process to satisfy this lien took over three decades ago. If you don't mind, please explaining to the city council how the reimbursement to the city uh, through the assessment function in the Green Tree House area. Madam Mayor and members of the council, um, this item, to the best of my knowledge, is just a simple oversight. Um, the satisfaction and release of lien is, is something that traditionally gets recorded against property um, uh, to, to remove, I, I guess, a security related to improvements. I, Brian, you're going to have to help me with this. I'm sorry. Thank you. This is something that's very routine. Uh, back in 1973, there was an assessment district established that affected these properties in this area. And the assessment district was to fund the installation of uh, curb gutter, sidewalk, and so forth. So uh, when an assessment district is formed, those uh, payments are put on the tax roll. The properties pay for a certain time period. And then after the, uh, all the payments are made over a certain number of years, Basically, the assessment district is no longer in effect, and so this was fully paid off. Uh, what happens, though, is there will be liens recorded on a property 
uh, the tax assessor uh, recognizes that there was an assessment on the property. So it's just simply a cleanup item just to take these liens off the property so that if they release or sell them, they're clear of the lien. It's very routine. Thank you. And then finally, for item C8, this is the receive and file the economic development SELA January through December 2018 activity report. When was the last time besides this one when an activity report was created for the economic development SELA? A second question is, has city secured permits and required processes to announce the upcoming Dunia Plaza organizations or the properties that are going to be coming forth? Those are my two questions. Mayor and Council, the last time the um, Economic Development and SCLA Activity Report was done was for 2017 activity. Um, it was done in early 2018, similar to this item. It's being presented early in 2019 to summarize all 2018 activity. I think the question was whether or not the permits had been pulled or, res or um, permit applications received for the project mentioned in the staff report in Dunia Plaza. The project um, has received entitlement through the Planning Commission, but I'm not aware that any permits have been pulled yet. The reason I asked, because I know when Cracker Barrel came, we're not, we weren't supposed to display, so I wasn't sure if there's certain processes before they're talked about, because the community's asking, when is um, the El Superior going to be here or something like that? And so when I see things like this that the development organization is working on, I'm wondering if it's through the permitting process that we get every month. Or, you know, how, how is that functioning? Uh, so as mentioned in the staff report, the economic development team actually sits in in-person meetings with projects that are looking to locate to the city. So they sit in the meetings and try to attract those businesses to the city. That's how they become aware of them. It's not necessarily that they've pulled a permit yet. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. So for item C2, um, if we can also piecemeal it for C C2, different vote, C because it's not the same vote for C2, 4, and 8. So I make a motion to um, approve item C4 and C8 as recommended by staff. I'll, I'll second that with the caveat that on C8 it requires a, a vote also by the Board of Directors of SCLA. Motion by Councilmember Gomez, seconded by Councilmember Jones. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries with Ramirez being absent. So what happened to C2? We now we take We're a waiting for a motion, a motion on C2. On that one now. I, I'd like to have an explanation on why it wasn't included with C4 and C8. They were all discussed at the same time. As because my vote is not the same. Okay. Move we approve item C2. Second. Motion by Councilmember Cox, seconded by Mayor Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries with Councilmember Ramirez being absent and Councilmember Gomez voting no. Now we move on to written communications. Item D1, initiate proceedings to annex track 14499 LMAD 6. Uh, Madam Clerk, read the recommendation. That the City Council adopt resolution number 19-013 to initiate proceedings to annex track number 14499 to ALMAD 6, detach track number 14499 from ALMAD 1, and direct the preparation of an engineer's report. Thank you. I'll ask council members if they have any questions of staff. I'll start with the... Uh, Councilmember Cox. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Jones. None. Thank you. Uh, Gomez. Yes. So item D1. It's the annexation for tracks 14499 to Almad 6. Detached track to 14499 from 
LMAD 1 Resolution 19-013. So LMAD 1 will take four council meetings to come to completion. So by June 8, 2019, would that be the last meeting and today the first of four meetings? It would be the first of three meetings. It'll take three meetings and four resolutions. The last one will be in June. Okay, and there are 60 properties and 37 of the 60 properties uh, agree to the supposed report because there's signatures. When I walked the entire LMAD 1, I ran into a lot of renters. How many of those signatures that are from, are from property owners did we verify and did the city verify or are we assuming that the 37 people that are for um, coming from LMAD 1 to LMAD 6 are actually the property owners? Also, I also ran into property owners who live in their homes for over 20 years and a lot of them were seniors on a fixed income. They were concerned that their property tax would go from $20 to their first year going to 182 and thereafter $144. So that hike kind of blew them, you know, like if we're on a fixed income, this is not fair. 60 homes will see their property bill go from 28 to 182 on the first year alone. Did the city of Victorville look to other options for the benefit of the public and assessment districts specifically today for LMAD 1? What are the clarified procedures that are applicable for le levying new or increased assessments? So the 37 are property owners and, and uh, I just want to point out that uh, it'll go to, a ballot will be sent to all 60 property owners so uh, all property owners will get a chance to vote on this issue. Um, we looked at all kinds of alternatives. The bottom line is they need increased revenues to be able to support the landscaping to what they're used to and what the city standards are and to what the neighboring communities have up and down Ridgecrest Road. So this only applies to one specific area, not the entire Elmad one. Thank you. No further questions. Madam Mayor, um, if I might, just to ad identify kind of how this item got here. This is not something that we as the city um, just placed on here and, and hope that the property owners vote uh, to detach and annex into LMAD 6. What we've received thus far has been petitions uh, where you actually have the property owners themselves petitioning the city saying we want to detach from the current LMAD that they're in and attach into another LMAD. And I, I believe largely the reason is because this particular LMAD is sandwiched in between two of the other LMADs that are healthier from a fiscal perspective. And so you can visibly see, especially if you're living in that neighborhood, the difference in how one area is maintained versus the other. So uh, because of that, it's my understanding that the property owners have signed petitions effectively asking the city to start this process. So effectively, uh, if the council is in concurrence, tonight would be the first step to initiate the proceedings and order an engineer's report. Uh, the city engineer would then be required to put together that engineer's report and bring it back at another meeting and presuming the council uh, approves that, then the council could order the actual election. And that's where we would then mail out the ballots to all of the affected property owners and presuming a majority of those properties, uh, I'm sorry, presuming uh, a majority of the respondents to the, to, to the, to the vote uh, or to the ballot uh, votes in the affirmative, then the detachment and annexation occurs. Thank you for that clarification. What I didn't get a response is 218 prop, how do individuals fight this if that's their choosing? I know as a city we have the ultimate authority to say yes or no, but the voice of the people with, with 218, and I didn't want to say prop 218, but I had to because I need people to know that there's an option if they don't want that because for the water, it was the same issue. Out of about 32,000 homes, only 68 people said we don't want our water rates to go up. They were angry and upset. And I said, what does 218 say? How do people get together to fight an increase in water? And the same thing would be for these 60 homes if they decide that sh council shouldn't have the overarching element. How do those people come together if that's what they want to do? It's just an option for the people. And, and Madam Mayor, I'd answer that by saying that's exactly what this proce uh, process does. It actually uh, puts a vote out to the people. This is not city initiated. This is, is private owner. 
initiated. And notwithstanding that, um, the ballots will go out to the property owners, and if they're opposed to this, then they would vote no. Thank you. Madam Mayor? Yes. Uh, I have a few comments, if I may. I don't have questions, but if you're ready to take comments. Uh, you don't have any questions? I don't at this time. time. No, okay, we'll wait for your comment then. I do not have any speaker cards at this time. So I need a uh, motion to adopt Resolution 19. I move that the council adopt the resolutions as recommended by the staff, resolution number 19-013. Second. Motion by council member Cox, seconded by Mayor Garcia. Any further comments? Yes, Madam Mayor, may I? Yes. Thank you. Well, first of all, I, I can't even begin to tell my colleagues how proud I am of our community for um, wanting to take the first steps to beautify their neighborhood. This is something that people just generally in the high desert, certainly in Victorville, have been crying out for, that, are, that, that we do something to improve the way um, our community looks. Those, these types of things increase property values, attract business, et cetera. So these 37 people who signed a, a petition, I am so proud of them. They are a prime example of what it means to take control of your city and do what is needed. Um, to make it a, a good place to live in and a place that we can proudly call home. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. I also have a comment. Not in good conscience can I vote when I have a selected amount of individuals who are not aware of what can happen. So I, I laud um, Mrs. Jones' um, idea of beautification but i also want to give back the power to the people for them to at least realize that they have an option whether they want to go for it or not go for it i think it's always going to the people as i said i will continue and i'll walk and make um, individuals aware of what's happening because i know we're not marketing it and so at least people understand if this does go up you know you had an option if you wanted to voice your opinion or not that's that's something that i will always push for when it comes to community and individual leaders and individual community members to understand what we, as a group of five, can do to empower you. Madam Mayor, I believe I have a little more time, thank you. So I just wanna make uh, this very clear. All of those residents will be notified by mail of the, the procedure and what um, could potentially take place, correct? So that is not a marketing campaign per se, uh, um, but it is um, our, our doing our due diligence to make sure our community is informed, correct? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. You understood completely. I have a motion by Councilmember Cox, seconded by Mayor Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. Motion carries with Ramirez being absent and Councilmember Gomez voting no. Now we move on to item D2, request to approve mutual aid agreement with Bureau of Land Management, California Desert District. Uh, Madam Clerk, read the recommendation. That the City Council approve a mutual aid agreement with the Bureau of Land Management, California Desert District with zero financial impact and authorize a city manager or his designee to execute said agreements. Thank you. Uh, council members, any questions of staff? I'll start with uh, Council Member Jones. None, thank you. Uh, Mr. Cox? No questions. Ms. Gomez? Yes, so for the Chief Captain, um, does the City of Victorville have plans in place when a disaster or fire occurs in that area that relates to emergencies that are restricted with mutual aid from providing supplemental assistance because resources are unavailable? So in other words, I was looking at some of the zoning. I don't have a map, though, and it's restricted to a, a specific zone, and it's only where there is wildfires. But if there were to happen, in my opinion, something major disaster, and we want mutual aid, but they're busy taking care of theirs, do we have a plan in place? Or are we thinking about something that can come, uh, something that if there is a threat that we would still be covered despite the fact we're having overlaps, not just of one BL, I think it's BLMC, DD, multiple overlaps, not just one. Mm -hmm. Madam Mayor and Council, I think the, <coughs> the answer to that is that is why we are establishing multiple mutual aid 
agreements so that we have that overlap. In this particular case, the Bureau of Land Management has property on the uh, northern border of the city. So we would then be able to utilize them as a cooperator if we have an event in the river bottom or going north from the river bottom. So then we're, we're going to have more than the BLM CDD, right? We're going to have someone else in case they weren't, they were not able to assist us. That's what my question was. And you said there's multiple, so I'm assuming there's more than us two. There's probably a third one. Well, if you recall in previous uh, meetings, you've approved a mutual aid agreement with Apple Valley, mm -hmm. also with uh, Cal Fire. Yeah, so um, I don't know if Apple Valley would cover that mutual aid zone, and I don't know if the other one would too. I mean, you know best. Uh, there's so many items. So for me to try to know if all these were the same area overlap, I don't know if there's a, a specific measure, but if you're saying yes, that's just, that was just my question. I appreciate your response. Yep. No further questions. Did you have something, Jim? No, I do no. not. I do not have any speaker cards. Therefore, I need a motion and a second. I shall move. Second. Motion by Councilmember Cox, seconded by Mayor Garcia. Any further comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carries with Councilmember Ramirez being absent. Item D3, amendment to contract with HR Green Pacific Inc. Madam Clerk, read the recommendation. That the City Council approve amendment number four to increase the contract with HR Green Pacific Incorporated by $100,000 from General Fund 100 to continue on call and map checking services. Thank you. Any questions of, council, uh, of staff from council members? Uh, Ms. Jones? None, thank you. I don't have any questions. Uh, Gomez? So this contract is with HR Green Pacific. My question is this contract is the Fourth Amendment. Is the Fourth Amendment done every six months approximately? It looks from my interpretation of the reading, it might be. The cost for the first half was 97,000 and the anticipated second half is about 100 grand, which would be about $200,000 to outsource the map checking and the engineer planning. How much would it cost the city to hire employees to do the same job in-house? And would that option not augment the engineering department and has the city looked into such exploration? Another question is, in the last five years, the city has needed in-house augmentation to timely review private development projects. To the public, doesn't it make sense that if 65% goes to the consultant of what the city revenues, that it be that we start employing locally, which means in-house, and what gives the mayor the authority to sign this agreement? <clears throat> to answer your first question, the amendments are done as necessary. There's not necessarily a six months time frame. So we have amended the agreement just to cover the anticipated expenses for the on-call plan check contract. And <clears throat> I don't have an analysis uh, that I can share uh, with comparing the contract services versus uh, hiring in house employees. But the reason we have this on-call contract is because the development activity can vary from uh, month to month, from year to year, depending on the number of plans or maps we check. So the idea was that with this on-call contract, we can handle the variable workflow without having to hire more in-house <coughs> in staff. So uh, our thought process there was we can be more responsive to the development community, and at the same time, uh, we're able to control our costs uh, and adjust them accordingly along with the uh, plan check activity. So that was, that was the idea with the on-call contract. Okay, um, and just, there's going to be for the D4 item, and you said to adjust our costs. Just remember that because I'll be touching on costs on the next one. I think they're sort of related. Thank you. I do not have any speaker cards. Therefore, I need a motion. Move approval of staff recommendations. Second. Motion by Council Member Cox, seconded by Mayor Garcia. Any further comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
All those opposed? Motion carries with Council Member Ramirez being absent. Item D4, amendment to contract with Innerwest Consulting Group. Uh, Madam Clerk, read the recommendation. That the City Council approve amendment number two to increase the consultant professional services provider agreement with Innerwest Consulting Group by $171,360 for a total of $221,360 for engineering development review services. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff by council members? Yes, um, Madam Mayor, may I? Yes, go Thank ahead. Thank you. All right, um, so I'll, I'll, I'll throw this to you, Mr. Metzler, and you can, you can hand it off to whoever you wish. So um, am I to assume that the rationale for um, hiring an outside consulting group on this would be the same as the reply that we got in item D3, that there, there are benefits to hiring an outside consulting agency? There is. Um, this one- Under certain circumstances. Correct. Th that is correct. Uh, this has a little bit of added element to it. This w was a position um, because it requires a PE license, um, which is an engineering uh, license. Uh, this was a full-time position up until about oh, maybe a year ago now, um, and we had actually had trouble filling this position with an FTE, or I'm sorry, a full-time equivalent. So it's a fairly critical position to help manage the flow of the engineering side of, of private development. So um, having had trouble filling this position permanently, we then resorted to contracting for services. Uh, so this is an individual through a firm that provides the services that we're looking for. We just can't find them on a full-time uh, basis as of yet. Okay, and then two follow-up questions on that. Um, so because this is, um a not to exceed kind of a, a situation, so we can we can modify this as we need as as the demand suits it. Correct. That is correct. All right. And then, is there any um, uh, anticipation of reflying that position that was originally unsuccessful? Um, we will. Uh, it, it's certainly a position that we envision long term needing to be uh, satisfied by a full time equivalent. But at this point in time, we're we're actually just in the early uh, stages of the relationship with this contract provider. So those discussions haven't been um, uh, something we've been discussing today. Uh, but it's something we may revisit at a later time. Okay. And then also, I noticed on page two fifty one. Um, it says this not to exceed fee is based on both uh, positions providing services on a full-time schedule, et cetera, from March 1st, 2019 through June 30, 2019. So today is March 19th. Um, has this already become in effect in some manner? Mm -hmm. Is it already being ex executed? Uh, <coughs> Yeah, my understanding is that we have already executed this contract. Uh, we executed it using my purchasing authority after having uh, gone out through a competitive selection process. So uh, my understanding is the reason why it's, com it's coming back to this council is that it's gotten to the threshold to where it's about to exceed my purchasing authority and we're effectively supplementing. I should add, and correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, we brought this contract firm on principally for the development uh, engineering development manager position, but I believe we're also adding services um, to include um, construction inspection as well. That is correct. We we had a previous contract or have a previous contract with another firm, uh, but instead of using that contract inspector, now we're using a contract inspector with Interwest. So in essence, that inspector was swapped out with a different firm. So that inspection position was added to this contract. Okay, thank you. That's all I have, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Jim, did you have anything? I don't have any questions. Uh, Gomez? So uh, my previous question was what gave the mayor the authority to sign the contract? Because this one does not have the mayor's authority. It has the city manager and they're both consulting firms. So my question was not answered previously and they need to because I need to understand why the mayor has authority over one, but then the city manager has authority over something that to me looks very similar, just difference in money terms. Uh, so I'll ask my questions for this one item. Remind me, please. So um, item D. 
The, well, the initial contract. No, I'm sorry, I need to look for my questions. Is it D4? I'm just going to turn again. Okay. Yes. So um, this item deals with engineering development review services. What gives the city manager the authority to sign the agreement consulting services and not the mayor? If you see the former item, the mayor has the authority, but this one, the mayor is not presented as the authority figure to validate the agreement. Why? Does the engineering development review services also do engineering plan and map checking? Why are we using multiple services when they can be a single consultant? Is there a process that the city must follow and would it not have been cost effective if we had combined the services of item D3 and D4 into one? What about the employee option of hiring within the department and looking at the mid-year 2018-2019 table of organization effective March 19, 2019, the city engineer makes between $10,509 and $12,774 monthly which calculates at approximately between 72 to 88 dollars an hour at a 36 hour a week losing the 10 percent comp compensation whereas inner west consulting group seconds. costs estimates and rate sheets show hourly billing rates for classification of engineering between 85 and 145 dollars an hour is there a reason why we're not hiring and instead we're outsourced and instead we are outsourcing Okay, so, so to answer your first question about the contract authority, the Interwest contract was first approved under the city manager's authority in the purchasing code, which is a limit of $50,000. So that contract was initiated. Now we're approaching the threshold of the $50,000 expense. So to continue with the contract to increase it through the end of the fiscal year, we need to gain city council approval because that would exceed the city manager's $50,000 authority. So that means the amendment to the contract would have to be approved by the mayor because it, it exceeds that expense limit. So that's why it was started initially with the city manager. Uh, to get back to your uh, question about uh, why we are not using one firm for both the uh, plan check services and also this company providing development review and inspection services. Uh, <clears throat> There are two completely different things. The plan check services are a different function than the development review. Uh, that position oversees the whole development re review process from beginning to end. That person is a registered engineer and uh, the inspection services could be provided uh, by a number of companies, uh, but in this case, Interwest was most responsive to, to our needs, and that's why we're contracting with them. Uh, to get back to your question about the in-house positions versus the contract positions, it's true that the hourly rate for contract positions are higher. Typically, uh, when you have a consulting firm, their hourly rate has a multiplier that uh, is going to be a higher rate than your in-house expenses with salary and benefits but again the deci this decision was made because uh, if there is a slack in development uh, we could just terminate the contract and we wouldn't have we wouldn't have to lay anybody off we we can be more responsive to the variable workload with development you can hire more in-house positions and if we think that that's sustainable and we would keep that person uh, for a minimal workload, that would make sense. But in this particular case, at this particular time, we feel like it better meets the needs of the city to, to contract this out. Do you have any other questions? No further questions. Thank you. I do not have any speaker cards, therefore I need uh, a motion in a second. Yes, Madam Mayor, I move that the council take action in accordance with the recommendation posted on the agenda. Second. Motion by Council Member Jones, seconded by Mayor Garcia. Any further comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries with Council Member Ramirez being absent. Now we move on to item D5. This is discussion only regarding the uh, consideration of the adoption of an ordinance for uh, acquisition of right of ways. The uh, recommendation is any action is at the uh, discretion of the city council. I believe this uh, was agendized by um, 
Council Member Cox. I made the request the request to agendize this matter, and uh, I knew it was going to turn into a pretty lengthy project because of the. You have to look at the 1911 Act, 1913 Act, 1915 Act, the assessments. Uh, two of them you tie together. If there's going to be bonded improvements, I don't anticipate that. Uh, what I do anticipate is that uh, if we have right-of-ways that are needed, um, we need to be able to have a one-year and probably a five-year capital improvement plan and start acquiring properties on the basis that it is actually possible for property owners to move a project up by the property owners signing a petition requesting an assessment district and the assessment district uh, that I am proposing uh, that we'll discuss when it comes to a full discussion um, is that uh, in exchange for giving up the right of way that they in fact then would get the improvements of equal or value or maybe more uh, without having to hire a person to acquire the property, go through the appraisals. Uh, it ends up very expensive to do that. And we also have a couple of known property acquisitions by individuals simply looking at capital improvement plan and looking at the city council's action and then rushing out and buying the property in front of that uh, simply to uh, uh, increase the value of the property. The fact is, when the city puts in street improvements, whether it be water, sewer, curb, gutter, it doesn't make any difference, it enhances the property, whether it's commercial or residential, it makes it more valuable. And in many instances where we run into a problem, we only have a limited amount of money where we run into a problem putting the right-of-way in. At least the experience has been in other cities and here in the past is that property owners will actually in initiate that assessment district to get that project moved up in their area, especially if they have, if it involves streets and the horrible conditions of streets. Otherwise, uh, we simply wait until the project comes around and, and uh, then go through a long process of acquiring right away and the appraisal is very expensive. So I wanted it for a full discussion, but you can't have that kind of a discussion unless you actually have the state law in front of you with a staff analysis on each one, and it's uh, going to be a little more involved than, than I think staff rec thought about, and, and me too, actually. But uh, So I ask that if they can't provide all that information prior to the discussion by the city council, that they continue this matter until they can put that together. My understanding is and correct me if I'm wrong, staff, is since the city council authorized this for a discussion item, staff is actually working on that and has been working on it. They're just not ready yet. Is that correct? Okay. Thank you. So at this time, there is no action. So do we um, continue this? To council Member Cox, would you like to make that as a motion to continue this? Well, yes. Uh, yes. Do I don't want this taken off the agenda. So I would uh, make a motion uh, that we continue this discussion. Uh, hopefully by the next meeting, but even if it isn't, be prepared to continue it again because I think the staff will want, or the council will want the information and they will want to be able to study it before we can enter into a real, full, meaningful discussion. And uh, I've already gotten inquiry from the general public who somebody told them we were going to come and tear out their block walls and front yards, which is absolute nonsense, but it always starts. There's always those individuals. So need the information. My motion, continue this until staff is prepared with all the information, but hopefully as soon as possible within the next one or two council meetings. I second that. And I would venture out to um, say that I would modify what you just stated to ask that the, analysis, the, that the analysis be as unbiased as possible where the pros and the cons are listed equally and not to un unconsciously embed that bias because I know I, I could definitely read through through something like that in a reporting or an analysis. So if you add a balance to pros and cons, that would really allow um, the assessment to be able to understand what is in it for the city and what is it for the property owner. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do is, um, would the city staff provide hard copies of all pertinent ordinances that are related to the acquisitions of right of way in the council's box? I don't know if we currently have any ordinances. Perhaps we don't, listening to um, 
Council Member Cox, we are working towards an ordinance and I'm just answering myself based on what I heard him say, but of course I'm interpreting those words. Is there? I, I'm sorry. I are, just do we have ordinances in place right now? We do have ordinances in place. There okay. has to be. Okay, so um, it would be, I know you said there's acts in 1911, well, 1915. If, if I can answer, we've been in executive session over and over and over on road projects for the acquisition of right away. We are following state law and current ordinances now and have been. What this does is provide a different method of acquiring right of ways. And I, I think that once. I think once it, you see the copy of the assessment districts, this is a state law. It's under the Streets and Highways Code of how a city may proceed to acquire right away. And I think once the city council uh, reads that and has a staff explanation, th there will be a lot of questions, I'm sure. Um, but I think that we actually have to have an analysis of the 1911, 13, and 15 acts, but they're very lengthy. In, in, any council member wants a complete copy, I think it should be provided. I don't need it. I've read it dozens of times, but if any council member wants to see it, um, then fine. So there's a modification by council member Gomez. Is there a second? There I, I want to be clear because is this being presented as an amendment or a substitute motion? Because it sounds like it's just an amendment. It sounded to me like it was an amendment to the motion. Mr. Cox's motion was to have staff right. present the item as soon as they are ready to present it. My understanding of Councilmember Gomez's substitute, or sorry, modification was that any analysis include an analysis, unbiased analysis of the pros and cons. Okay. Is there a second? There being no second, the motion dies. So it's back to Councilmember Cox's motion to have staff bring this back as soon as possible. I, I'm just confident. And I had already that seconded that. that. Correct. They will yeah. be uh, un unbiased in their analysis. Correct. However, that's not a part of the motion, so you can just ignore that part. You're just going to do what you usually do. And that's, what, that's, why that, that's why I added that portion, because I want to see, motion. as a community, a pro and con. Because we're not all engineers here and experts. So it really, the public doesn't have access to administration the way perhaps four of you do. And so it's me trying to understand that I want the community to be involved. And so that's why I stated that. So but if you want to reject that and say, but do this, I'm just hoping that they listen to you. That's all I'm saying. Because it's one thing to make a motion and it's another one to say, but this is what I want despite the fact that I didn't put this in there. But I just wanted to say that, so you already made your motion. I have a motion by Councilmember Cox, seconded by Councilmember Jones. Any further comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries with Councilmember Ramirez being absent. Item D6, discussion regarding Councilmember term limits. Any action is at the uh, discretion of the City Council. I do have one card, uh, Ramiro Rodriguez. <coughs> I think that's very justified, leaving the S <laughs> out of that wording up there. I pretty much know who, is, who it's directed as. At the last meeting, I saw a pretty uh, loud argument, a heated argument about people being up there for generations. Uh, and one of the recommendations was limiting it to just only one term, which is fine. Uh, you get the person out that you don't want in the next uh, elections you know, or next meeting, you rescind that. <laughs> and so that person's out and then you have the open term limits again. The thing is, it's, it's, you have to respect, understand everybody has different views and, and, and different values and sees things differently. Uh, you, some of the council members say that uh, they feel they're the ones that should be making all the decisions for us because we elected them. Other members say they should 
we should be the ones that have the last word because we voted them in. And well, my, I respect they seeing they they seeing it that way. But uh, to bring this up in in just on a heated argument, what are the things that are brought up just in the heat of the moment? Uh, it's very important we have someone that represents us, especially the Hispanic community, since we're invisible in all the census and all the demographics here in, in, and in California, us being the, finally the majority since 2014, but we're not included in the census. I don't know what's gonna happen in 2020. I'm not white, I'm Hispanic, but I'm not included. And for that reason, it's very important that we maintain our civility, uh, I know it gets heated up there, but really, limiting term limits to just one member only, that to me is, is not, is very unfair, especially to us, the voters, that have that person representing us. Thank you very much. Uh, Maggie Martin. Good evening, Your Honor, Council. Um, you know, in the few years now, four years that I've been coming to council roughly, um, what I've learned amongst other things is um, when you have a new person come on board, such as Ms. Gomez in 2016, it takes a while to get up to speed. That said, um, much as I'd hate to, s hate to say it, I have to be honest about it, I think a, a two-term limit is good. Otherwise, if it was up to me because of her, I'd be like, get this person out, which I'm confident will happen in 2020 anyway. But I'd be like, get rid of them. It's bad news. But I think it's only fair to allow somebody who might be brand new to the council to, um, and not experienced, um, have an opportunity to get fully on board. Thank you. That was the last card that I had. So, discussion. Uh, I'll start with uh, Ms. Jones. Yep. Well, I think, I, I, I'm not sure if it was Councilmember Cox or Gomez, that, or, or Gomez that think, brought this oh, issue yeah, up, I'll, so I don't I'll know if they want to tee it up before we. You're the one that uh, I think does this. If you allowed her to speak, I don't see why she couldn't speak. I'm asking you to speak. Well, you gave her the floor. I'm asking you to speak. I'm going to wait. Did you want to say something or did you want no, to? No, I just procedurally. Uh, okay. I'll Council. move this. We just delay this. I mean, you, yeah, I can you brought it up. You wanted to talk about it. I seconded it so you could talk about yeah, it. When we are. The thing is, the mayor allowed Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Jones said, she I and I you. referred back to if that's what the mayor wanted to do. So I want to make sure Mrs. Jones is in agreement. Thank you, Councilmember okay. Gomez. I, I appreciate it. But but traditionally, when an, uh, an item you is requested correct. by council member, that council member has the opportunity to tee up the I item. I mistake. You so are correct. correct. Yeah, we've not practiced that. So I appreciate that, that you're bringing mistake. that into that, into that light was today. My mistake. I, I appreciate that Mrs. Was Jones. My mistake. So um, yeah. So I had a question here um, to the city attorney. Would you write up a formal opinion on how the local municipalities may address this matter? because it's not just up to us. I know that we have advisory votes and then we have presidential elections and then we set it out to the people and the people do the term limits, just like if people would like us to be individually elected uh, by districts versus at large, that had to be thrown out to uh, the public in, in an actual election term. It's not like the five people can say, this is what I'm going to do, even though you see that a lot here, it's just a power play um, it's an advantage of if someone is ignorant into some rules or regulations, it's like a tactic to really intimidate or cause fear. And so I want to understand formally with law, what is it that we can actually do? Because it's not just, I'm sure this is, gov this is not a municipal affair. This is governed by state law. And we don't have anything that shows us here how it's governed so that we can take those approaches. So like Mr. Cox said, right now it's only up for discussion. And so I wanted to see, are there any laws, processes, any statutes that address the enactment of such limits? I'd like to see any state and federal laws that govern these term limits. Like I said, it's not whatever we want to do here, even though it almost seems all the time like that's how it is, but it, there isn't. There's administrative law, case law, 
Um, even though we're a charter city, this is not a municipal affair. There's a lot of state law behind it, but we don't have any uh, discussion in terms. We just basically have a one sheet submitted that says discussion regarding council member term limits and the discussion says on March 5th, council unanimous voted to agendize the discussion of term limits and accordingly it's being presented. So there's nothing here. So you would say, well, what can we talk when we're, we haven't read something that would allow us, well, state law allows us to do this. Let's implement an election during the presidential election and let's go ahead and start approving it right now so that during the presidential election, we have term limits and the people are actually gonna vote for it and they have their say. I asked the question for the city attorney, but he's uh, quiet. I, I believe it'd be for the council to direct me to do that type of research if you wanted that, but it's up to the council at this point to have a discussion. Well, let, for clarification, Ms. Gomez mentioned election by districts, were you Wanting term, thinking term limits with districts or term limits with at large, or I didn't understand the purpose of that. The purpose of that was to show that things have to go out to the general public, to the electorate, so that they vote what they want to happen at the city council, whether it's we continue to be at large or we're going to be by districts. But today we're not discussing that, but that was in order to show how five council members or three can't just say we want to do term limits okay, this person is out, now let's reinstate, we're gonna be here for eternity's sake and we'll be the next generation of dinosaurs. Can't do that. There's, like I said, there is state law that backs up all of this. It's not a municipal affair. And when I asked the city manager, I mean the city attorney, to be able to weigh in, you'll see he refers back, well, what is it that the entire council says? But when you see one council member address, you don't see that feedback as well the entire council needs to. And so these are the performances that you're seeing above and beyond. And that's why I need to make sure I go back. So a lot of people are new here. And I have to bring you back as to two years ago what's been happening. So that's what I was doing relaying. Well, first of all, let's clarify that the, the charter city, we did go to an election in regard, does the, does the public want to amend the charter and have election by districts? They overwhelmingly said no. That decision has been made, and that's made by the electorate. Uh, so that's settled, and so the question that we have before us is does the city council want to have uh, term limits? And you raised the question, and I wanted to hear what you had to say about it. We're waiting to hear from her. I Didn't I you just hear I spoke? It was my three minutes up, I think, because I did speak for about three minutes. And I did tell you that staff didn't provide anything for all of us. And I'm not just going to pull stuff out of thin air when we have a city attorney who, prov who can provide the information. I'm not the city attorney. I'm not the expert. My understanding is the request last time was just to have this on for discussion at the council level to see if you want to even explore term limits. That is correct. It was just was discussion. It had nothing to do with staff, so don't put the blame on the staff. Staff is here to serve the community, and we need resources, and if they have the power and the expertise, that's not yeah, what I you lay agendized. it back on them. That was not what you agendized. That's what, that's what they're here for, to serve the community. So, uh, you know, I, I think no, that... No, uh, Mrs. Martin, just, that's the first time you're out speaking. That's your first time, and I'm going to, for the record going to say every time this woman speaks, she does not get the attention of the decorum and she does not get shut down. So that's the first time and I'm always gonna publicize it. So if anybody else out speaks and you see a direction, you start seeing the bipartisanship. If any that's the second time, Mrs. Martin. That's the third time you're I speaking. I demand that you take charge of this meeting. Well, I am. Maggie, you have to remove yourself. And Ms. Gomez, if you don't refrain yourself, you will be removed also. I can't be removed. Oh, yes. I'm part of representing the city. Don't show your partisanship. It doesn't help to do that. Oh, really? So, Madam Mayor, if I, if I, if I may, it, it seems to me that I, there's a little bit of nuance to this, so I can understand Councilmember Gomez's comments. Um, but 
this is, it, it was my understanding that when this was, a, was to be agendized, it was to have a preliminary discussion to see, you know, to, to kind of tap into what we're feeling. Do, do we want to delve into this further? So that was my understanding of this. So I wouldn't expect necessarily um, a lot of data um, supporting this particular item. Um, for me, it was just to get a feel as to where we wanted to go from here. Do we want to have a deeper discussion on this, or, or is this something that we might be serious about, and so forth. And, and if I may continue, Madam Mayor, um, there was a comment made, and, I, and I, it, it, I, I understand how this mistake could be made um, and mis be misinterpreted, but I certainly don't want any council members, certainly none of my colleagues, to feel like they're being singled out because that's beneath the dignity of this office. Um, but on the item D6, it does say discussion regarding council member singular term limits. I think it's very important to note that council member is, a, is an adjectival modifier to the noun, so therefore it's completely grammatically correct to use a singular form. It does not in any way convey that there's one council member being targeted. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that. So is this the end of discussion then? the end of discussion there's no additional motion on it so I move on to item D7 update since uh, update since homelessness uh, workshop and regard and regarding homelessness solutions tax force information again no action requested information item only A who question are, who agendized this item? Ma Madam Mayor and members of the council, um, the city council asked that we provide an update uh, since uh, last being directed to form a homelessness solutions task force. And uh, so what we did put together for you, and we can go through it point by point if you like, but, but what we uh, shared with you is certainly some things that have occurred since uh, originally being given that direction to form the task force. Uh, which include a series of meetings with stakeholders that we believe will be uh, resourceful in, in helping address some of the homelessness issues. We've also gone so far as to having researched a number of different communities, counties uh, throughout the state of California to see how they're uh, viewing uh, the, the issue and trying to get their arms around it and, and also address it. Um, and uh, we've also gone so far as to uh, initiate a solicitation, f uh, an application process, if you will, to try to make sure that this task force that we do uh, put together that will be led by staff, um, but taking the representation of the community, we wanted to identify key stakeholders that not only um, that deal with um, the issues on a daily basis, but can help provide some advisory as to um, which direction um, we should be going. And then finally, beyond the uh, information that's contained herein, staff did attend uh, today a continuum of care meeting, and I, I'd like to report back that uh, it is appearing that these efforts that were put in forward, including uh, f the formation of the task force, which we envision one of the first uh, orders of business for that task force is to come up with a strategic plan. These efforts are timely because the through the continuum of, uh, continuum of care, uh, there is an effort to have a countywide uh, regional plan uh, to address homelessness and I think that's in large response to everybody's collective uh, belief that there is going to be additional rounds of funding available to help um, uh, fund uh, the solutions we put together so putting together a local plan to tie into uh, a regional plan uh, would be our, our next step once we can get the task force formed uh, so that we can be more uh, competitive in actually identifying additional funding resources to, to further our efforts. Question, Madam Mayor? Uh, go ahead, Jim. Um, at the City Council meeting last year at Lake Arrowhead, I was one of the speakers in, regarding, in regard to housing for the homeless. The county is continuing to work on that, I'm told. I'm told that there is additional funding and that agencies are taking advantage of that. Um, can you tell us where since it's been discussed publicly, the Queens Motel Project, 
which would provide housing for homeless where that's at. Two, uh, it was brought to my attention by a couple of phone calls that the city of Victorville was not, um, we were out of step with the low-cost housing, that we don't have sufficient low-cost housing. I, I don't know how that happens. I think we have a whole city full of low-cost housing. But our new governor has threatened to withhold road funds, which aren't have anything to do with housing in the cities until they get uh, until they get in step or get in sync or get in whatever. Is staff pursuing that? Is that just a newspaper run amok? Is this something behind it? And are, is staff looking into it? Last thing we need to do is to lose road, road funds. These are two separate issues. I'd like to have staff uh, comment on that, if I could, Madam Mayor. Mayor and Council, uh, as far as the uh, former Queens Motel, now named the Desert Haven Project, the city has actually issued permits for the rehabilitation of that project. However, construction has not started uh, because the developer, which is a partnership with the County Housing Authority, um, is making some minor modifications to allow for more spaces for services to be performed on site for the residents there. So they're making some minor changes and then they'll be moving forward. Uh, regarding the, the phone call, I believe that you're uh, referring to um, an article, and I can't remember if it was in the Daily Press, but it seemed to indicate that Victorville was on the list of uh, cities that had not met certain housing requirements. I believe it was RENA numbers. Um, and I believe our PIO did issue a correction to that because we were not on the, we are not on a list for not performing as far as providing low income housing. Oh, so I, I'm sorry I didn't hear, so that's to be corrected? To be corrected, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. It was very an much. error. So we are in compliance. Correct. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the other item that I, I, I happen to, since I've been involved with this homeless issue for, for some time, um, the question, are we going to work with the county? They have a task force, and of course we have been in the past and going to continue, but I'm not, what, I'm not sure, and I don't know, what role that task force may play in this committee. You have 30 seconds. For me. Thank you. So the county has an Office of Homeless Services. Um, we also, um, there is also a countywide consortium of care that Keith referred to earlier, and the ICH, the Interagency Council on Homelessness, is the governing board to that um, con continuum of care effort. Um, as you know, Victorville has a seat on that um, board, and we actively participate in that group. Um, so it's not exactly a task force, but it is focused on countywide homelessness issues, and they will be working on, in the next three months, a plan to address homelessness um, on a countywide level. And um, as the city manager mentioned, as the city of Victorville moves forward with its um, strategic action plan to address um, homelessness issues, it really should be in line with the uh, county's goals and um, that will be our best way to uh, make sure we can secure funding. So we do actively participate with the different county um, agencies, but we also have to do some things at a city level, which is the, the formation of the task force that we're um, undergoing right now. Thank you. Yes, very quickly, Madam Mayor. So uh, I know that there's an effort to recruit uh, volunteers to sit on the Homelessness Solutions Task Force, and I think the cutoff date for those applications is March 28th, if I recall correctly. Thank you. Do we have an idea as to when, um, or do we have we set a deadline as to when we would like to actually have the task force um, that includes the stakeholders uh, in place and operating? So yes, the deadline is the 28th. Um, as of today, we've already received 51 applications to fill the 12 spots that we have available. Um, we'll, once the deadline passes, we hope by the next week to start reviewing the applications and start um, deciding, um, going through a process to decide uh, which applications will actually end up filling the committee. So probably two or three weeks after the deadline to close, and then we'll start scheduling the first meeting to get rolling. 
Very good. All right, that's all I have. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Ms. Gomez, did you have anything? How are the delegates to the ICH meetings partnering with the task force and the homeless coordinator if, they're, if that will be the case? I know you sit at the ICH as an alternate, and I understand we're in the process of hiring the homeless solutions coordinator. And I understand that there's the Greens Motel, or not the Greens Motel, there's a motel that's going to be 24 hour wraparound services. But these are separate entities. How will you pull them together so that they're having a conversation in this task force? That, that's, uh, in fact, the art and probably the biggest focus of uh, our role. I think that's what we identified when we started talking about the formation of the task force is because we're not experts in the subject, though we're becoming much more knowledgeable um, and it's not a uh, is not traditionally been a primary role for the city There are a lot of other stakeholders a lot of other service providers including uh, the county uh, that are all um, providing different forms of services, so um, it, It's been our adopted role uh, not only to create the strategic plan, but to serve as uh, a coordinator of all those efforts so that we're unifying them in such a way to where it was uh, working towards achieving um, the strategic goal, if you will. Okay, and what phone number and what name to those people who are interested in being a part of the task force contact? I know there's an email, but there's no phone number and there's no contact person. And some people want to use their phone versus an email. Um, also, who will be a part of the selection? In other words, is there a panel of individuals, three, four, five people who are going to be selecting and reviewing the applications? Who are those people? And what is the reason behind those people that were selected to be the panel that's going to select these applications? Why are they there, their purpose? And the next thing is what ranking or number system will you be using so that we don't show that we're being unconsciously biased or prejudiced towards a friend, family member, or someone that we, we, you know, we play favorites with? How are we going to do that? Uh, so to answer the first question about which number they can contact, the city prepared a press release that the Daily Press actually picked up, and it's covered on our website as well. Um, not just an email was given. My direct phone number was given, 760-955-5033, and I have received several calls since that press release went out. Um, regarding who will sit on the selection committee, the council tasked myself and Mr. Metzler as the staff um, to oversee that formation, so it'll be himself and, and me, um, as well as a couple of key staff members, our community services director, our code enforcement official. Um, they have been helping with um, the, um, address various issues related to the homeless, um, homelessness population, homeless population, and so they will help. Um, as far as how will we ensure there's any, um, not any bias or, or family, um, yeah, that's just, we would have to recuse ourselves from any kind of family member or someone that would sit on a nonprofit or try to get a family member on the committee. So, yeah, that wouldn't occur. Okay. Um, the Your number and contact and the press release wasn't a part of today's agenda. So unless I strictly went to the website and someone said, well, Blanca, who do I call? I would... I would say, well, it's not on the agenda. Let me ask a staff you member. You have 30 seconds. So that's why I was asking because it's, it's not here, and I don't know how many council members specifically go to the website to find that information. This time I didn't. Maybe next time I will, but I appreciate that information for the general public consumption today. I'm sorry. I apologize. I thought the PIO sent it to the council, the press release. Thank you. There is no action required uh, on this item. So that's the end of discussion. Now we move on to uh, public comments. Uh, and I do have some cards. I have one person that left. I know they're not here. Um, Angel is a scoop scoop 
Mayor Gloria Garcia. It's a pleasure being here, you know, because you're a blessing, a blessing mayor for the city of Victor, Victorville. And now, uh, I would like to ask you if I could have an appointment or some help. I believe the city attorney is the one that can help me, or the Mr. Mr. Kit Metler, the city manager, because I'm having a big problem. I have not been fighting for elders abuse, child abuse, and woman abuse. And a lot of people don't like me out there, and I don't care. The bad people, I don't care. I'm for the right people. I'm for the city, and I fight for the city. Whatever city I'm at, I build, you know, in Nasusa condominiums with my mayor. I build the Pacific College to a stand. It's unbelievable what we did. We did $64 million for the city in three years. And I have a record to be the best police officer for the city of Azusa, too because they went by my law. I had to make laws down there for the barrios because they didn't understand. You know, I had to put a green line and all the writers on the wall, but we got rid of them, thanks to my Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a real knight from Spain. Mine was interpreted by Mr. John Kennedy. She had me teach in Spanish when I was 11 years old and the university at Tempe, Arizona, I'm on records, and my brother has the records still available of all the blue ribbons in track, and uh, we are very proud of it, and I'm very proud of my people. And you remind me of the grandma of my country, Mexico, Sara Garcia. She's, she's always in my heart. She was a blessing lady like him. So I need some help because <clears throat> I got into, I never had a wreck in my life. And this lady came, and I was in the middle lane already of Bear Valley Boulevard. You have 30 he seconds. came straight up and he'd been head up collision. And the officer, I didn't state that I was making a left turn. He stated on the police report that I, was, that I stated. I got two broken ribs, three broken ribs. I got dislocated shoulder right now, 16 days ago. I mean, I've been through a lot of pain. And I just need to be corrected. And I need help because your Mr. Time is George up. Turan been doing his best. Yeah, your time is up. Uh, did you need to speak with an officer? Is that what you need? Excuse me. Did you need to speak with a police officer? No? No, I don't want nothing to do with the police anymore because they're incorrectly, they, they deny me the correctly. I ask them to proceed <clears throat> because I've been a police officer with the, with the right procedure. And he denied me, he didn't want to take pictures. He didn't want to make sure. Well, your time is up, but I will have someone speak to you after our meeting and maybe we can get someone that can help you. God bless you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, just sit there and wait and we'll see what we can do. Ramiro Rodriguez. I wanna go back and uh talk about uh, something that Blanca mentioned on C2 about uh, having uh, an outside independent council review certain instances and situations that happen here in, in the council chambers, which uh, I understand it's, uh, if there's nothing to hide, then there's nothing to fear. Um, I've seen the, the accounting reports. I read the Kurth investigation report that they did. Uh, but it was all really what the city presents to them is what they see and it's just an opinion that they give of those reports. But it's actually, they're not really auditing or, or investigating or searching anything. 
So it kind of left me feeling a little hollow that really nothing was really, it was just skimmed over the surface. My personal opinion, it, it felt like the coroner doing the autopsy on somebody, he just did over. So really, uh, I understand Blanca, Miss, Miss Council Member Gomez asking for certain uh, requirements from the council. Uh, it's understood of her and it should be respected that this is not always gonna be like this all the time. Times are changing, people are changing. Uh, I've noticed we're not gonna have any celebrations for, for the Hispanic community this year or last year or the year before or the year next year. Mr. Cox discussed that we did have a very diverse uh, uh, chamber, but do we really have a diverse chamber or do we have the illusion of diversity? That's one of the things that we really need to ask ourselves here if the council chamber is really meeting those demands of the changing populace up here in Victorville. If you go to the council, to the census on, on your phone, California census, anything, Victorville, it's really biased on one side. So a lot of opportunities, a lot of services are being denied to people up here because we're not counted. Just ask the nonprofits how much they're struggling. The money's going somewhere else because you have a numbers puncher in Hollywood and Washington DC and New York and they don't see that there's a, a, a Hispanic population up here. So how can we be counted? How, we, how can we be provided service? I leave you with that, thank you. I, I have a question. Go ahead. To, uh, um, we do not conduct the census, it's not within our jurisdiction. Staff aware, who conducts the census? Uh, I know the city planner has some staff attending a uh, meeting in preparation for the 2020 census um, where we can act, have input as a city into how the census is conducted. Um, but as far as it's, it's a U.S. Census Bureau that does it. Well, I think that, I think that uh, you know, when it's said here, people hear, they wonder, I think in this particular instance, because it's important, that at least we have some information that we put on the agenda for information only on the next agenda item. It's very simple. People need a number they can call or somebody they can contact if they have a concern. Thank you. Those were all the cards that I had on the uh, public um, comments. And um, Mr. Cox, don't we need to add it to the agenda because right now you just gave direction to the city uh, administration and I don't believe that they would certainly acquiesce to what you've stated unless there's a council motion but if you have the power to direct and they put it on the next meeting more power to you I agree that that should be on the agenda we're not there yet for uh, to agendize items uh, now we move on to um, our city managers uh, reports Madam Mayor and members of the council uh, I have a few cons uh, community service development activities to, to share with you first as far as the community service activities, so we've got a spring festival and egg hunt uh, coming up. Uh, that event is gonna be April 20th at Hook Community Center. It's something that we do annually. Tickets are now on sale and they'll be on sale until the event is sold out. Um, and admission is uh, free uh, to the egg hunt. I'm sorry, egg hunt is $5 per child to participate in the egg hunt. Um, 21 day reading challenge is starting uh, at the Victorville City Library. That's uh, uh, from the period of March 1st to March 31st. Um, we also have Community Cleanup Day. That's our annual uh, event, um, Saturday, April 13th, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's going to be various sites throughout the city of Victorville. Um, no charge to participate. Uh, volunteers receive a free T-shirt, gloves, litter stick, bags, water, and, and coupons uh, for discounted lunch at local restaurants. Um, it's a pretty amazing event, and it's a good opportunity to, to, to get out there and meet some of our community members and, and do the good for the city, which is cleaning up um, some of the, the trash that's just littered throughout the community. 
Uh, we talked about Desert Havens a little bit earlier, so I won't go too much further into that. Um, Rubbermaid expansion, um, we've got a temporary CFO issued on the uh, Rubbermaid expansion uh, that expires uh, March 28th, so we're expecting final to be uh, in, in place probably before our next council meeting. Uh, and that's right there on uh, Air Expressway in Nevada, right at the, the uh, footsteps of SCLA. Also, uh, inspections are ongoing for the addition of a filling room uh, line at Dr. Pepper, and that's uh, currently underway as well. So they're adding actually a sixth process line to their uh, plant operation. And finally, uh, Animal Control will be hosting a low-cost vaccination and license clinic. That will be Saturday, April 27th, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, here at City Hall. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, now we move on to item E3, which is uh, council member discussion and possible action regarding items for the upcoming city council agenda. I uh, will start with uh, Ms. Jones. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have none. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you. Um, in regard to the census data, I just would request that we put some information together. Um, I saw a sign recently, I'm racking my brain, it was a billboard, it said, are you being counted? I think it was in Orange County, and it had to do with the census and then urging people to participate. So I don't know where we're at, but I'd like to request staff to look at that. It's very important that uh, everyone be counted, and so I'd like to put that on the agenda. I so move. Second. Motion by Councilmember Cox, seconded by Mayor Garcia. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'll, I'll hurry. The second one, I read in the paper that uh, Mojave Water Agency is going to be dealing, I think, at their next meeting on the ramp down. When, when they ramp down, that's less water available, that's more makeup, that's more that we have to pay. Um, I, I, I just don't understand with the drought being over and the wettest year in years and years that they would ramp down. That doesn't make any sense. Um, it's going to, that's costly to the city if they ramp down and I'd like to have a staff analysis so we can better understand it. Um, I don't know when this is going to be before the MWA, but I just can't imagine that they're going to be for this. Well, wait a minute. We would pay more money. I can't imagine being against it, but I can't imagine us being for it. So I, unless staff is prepared to, uh, talk about that and, um, and, and so I'm running out of time. The reason it's dark, it's 7th and A. We have traffic signals that have four street lights. 7th and A has traffic signals but only two street lights on top. That's why it's dark. I'm sure staff can take care of that. Um, I don't, it may be too late to put the ramp down uh, on the next council agenda, but if not, I think it's, it's money. We have to pay money for this. So if staff has any. Any, uh, anything to add, I'd appreciate it. Did That's you wanna, all I have. Want to agendize it? Is that it? For discussion? Well, or it's not going to be good to agendize it if they're going to make a decision. I know they have a meeting next week, and I don't. Madam. They, no, it's not going to do any good to agendize it. Is staff prepared to discuss this? Uh, Madam Mayor and members of the council, as to the uh, ramp down matter involving the water master, um, separate and distinct from MWA. Um, that's something that we have been monitoring. I have a lot of information on my desk. I've been monitoring it and getting briefed uh, from our uh, Director of Public Works and Water. Um, it was something I was already intending to uh, send to you. I just haven't uh, done that yet. Um, so uh, whether you um, vote to add that to an agenda item or not, I was already intending to provide a summary of um, what's before the uh, Water Master, which is in fact a, a 5% recommended uh, ramp down for uh, base uh, annual production. So we're only agendizing one thing. Everything else is just for discussion. The staff well, analysis, the street lights, and the money to pay for. Yeah, that's just for information. Oh, okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Gomez. So um, on each of these items, um, I'd like to make a motion too. And then the first one is, we know that the city of Victorville spent $45,000 of which 4,000 went to marketing and 1,000 went to supplies for the preparation of our fall festival. 
The City Council and the residents of the city would like to discuss and take action on allocating monies from now on to celebrate Cinco de Mayo as we have celebrated the Fall Festival. And that's what I would like to add to the agenda. Is there a second? There being no second, the motion dies. The second one I also like to add to the agenda is many residents have been asking for the city to consider the month of May or the month of September and every year thereafter to be recognized as Hispanic Heritage Month from the city of Victorville. Proclamations shall be given beginning 2019 is what I've been asked. This is a time when we get to recognize contributions of the Hispanic and Latino Americans to the group's culture and heritage. Is there a second? There being no second, the motion dies. The third one that I've also liked to agendize is the capping of training and training meetings, education, and travel expenses for city administration. Particularly, I've looked at the city manager's budget for $16,000 in travel expenses where a council member can't even get $1,200 to represent the city in educational meeting or any such things. Um, I have come to know that the host of a lot of restaurant meetings um, is where he ends up paying and picking up the tab on tax mayor on taxpayers money and that needs to be started that needs to start being watched really closely. Is there a second? There being no second the motion dies. The next thing is I'd like to discuss and agendize the reimbursement of the Green Tree Golf Course monies to the city through an assessment that can be initiated through property owners, property tax bill in maintaining that golf course. We approximately have 680 homes that are abutted on that golf course. Uh, the five-year contract is up June 2019. And other than high subsidies, we need to have that percentage of homeowners, I know Mr. Cox lives right at that golf course and benefits greatly. We need to have an assessment and I'd like to start exploring that process and that thought. Is there a second? There being no second, the motion dies. Uh, and the last thing is, um, I, I lost, I'd also like to agendize is the, co the constituents have been asking for the city to consider the month of June as Pride Month to be recognized by the city of Victorville through a proclamation. June is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersex, asexual, LGBTQIA history month, which is intended to encourage honesty and openness. By recognizing the month of June as Pride Month, we take a positive stance against discrimination and violence and promote self-affirmation, dignity, equality, rights, increasing their visibility as a social group, and celebrate gender variance. Is there a second? There being no second, the motion dies. Do you have anything else? No. I don't have anything either, so we move on to E4. And this is um, reports from council members, three minute uh, time limit. Uh, Mr. Cox, do you have something? Well, I, I'd like to figure out how to answer all these questions. I'd, for anybody who thinks millionaires live on the golf course, I'll give you a tour. There's trailers on the golf course, there's rental units, it's one of the lowest assessed values area in the whole city. And I'll be glad to give anybody a tour it is not what it says, what's being addressed here at all. I think there's more rentals on the golf course than any place else in the city also. And there's more complaints and downgrading from the assessment. It's factual data. I presented it at one time. It's regarded. Also, I, I, somehow we need to address representing the public. We are elected to represent the public. We do that. That's what each one of us do. That's what all the taxpayers and voters expect. We do that. But then once the city council makes a decision and we go to another meeting, we have to represent the city. Clear and different distinction. And I'd be more than happy to talk to anyone anywhere about that. Um, I have 8,000 voters that elected me too, and I listen to them all the time. I think they 
all try to call me. So somehow in our reports, I don't know how to get this out, but statements are being made that are simply untrue and misleading, and I, we need to answer these because one of the things that we kind of find out is that, that's coming in here, we're very diverse, we want to be, you know, I have Hispanics in my family, I have African Americans in my family, but they tell me that there's an absolute effort to try to divide the community, and we have been so happy and so proud, and we have talked about how diverse we are, and now we want to stop and back up and single out and pay attention to each little group as if they were different and somehow each one is different than the other. I think we need to discuss this uh, because the last individuals that I heard from was the African-American community, and I don't know that they represent the whole community, but they're pretty happy with what we have and what we've done. And uh, we need to discuss this. If we are discriminating in any way against any group or individual that is just not acceptable, we need to change it. But on the other hand, you know, we can have a proclamation every day for somebody or something, but it simply highlights that division, and I think we need to be very, very careful. I don't know where we put this on the agenda. I don't know how we do it. I don't know where it comes from, but I leave the meetings, and before I get home, I get calls from people saying, is the council going to respond to comments made for people who come up here? It's like the opinion page. You can say what you want to, but because we web stream, people wonder is it true? And many times, sorry to say, you have 30 not. seconds. We need to answer those people who come and take the time to speak. Sorry, thanks. I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. First of all, I'd like to express my sincere apology to our new fire department. I was out of state uh, and came back early so that I could be present at the swearing-in and the badge-pinning ceremony. Unfortunately, um, due to unforeseen circumstances, I was literally stuck down the hill and couldn't get back up here. I hear it was a wonderful event. I'm sorry to have missed it, and Chief Benson, I ask that you would um, share my good wishes to the rest of your team. Also, I, 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 I'm going to broach a subject that I've um, not wanted to for some time, but I'm, I'm becoming increasingly concerned by some behaviors that are happening behind the dais, I think, that does a disservice to um, the good working of our council and certainly to the um, um, health of our city. I'm have listened a number of times to comments about um, negative comments and allegations, strong allegations against our city manager. And I, I just really need to make sure that everybody understands that our city manager is under a contract. He has one boss with five heads. That's each member of the city council. We are to work in unison to evaluate our, sup our, our city manager that occurs in closed session necessarily because it's a personnel issue. Instead, I'm hearing incendiary language behind the dais that, um, that for me comes across as really a unilateral evaluation of our city manager. I don't think it's procedurally appropriate um, and it, it's um, not helpful um, to our city if there are concerns about things that the city manager is doing or not doing, these are the very types of issues that should be taken up during his regular evaluation. So having said that, I think it's very important that our community understands that we all have to work together as a team. We all come from different, ba different backgrounds. We all have different skill sets, different experiences in life and, life, and we get to bring our perspectives to the table whether we agree with them or not. Councilmember Gomez has a number of people in our community that sing her praises, and I'd like to get to know her better to see about those things. Um, I will hug and kiss anyone you have 30 and seconds. everyone all day long, but at the end of the day, business is business. We've heard repeatedly that four council members are um, able to have access to administration to prepare for council meetings. Councilmember Gomez used to have that access, but when one breaches the, the norms for decorum and, and those things that um, 
are detrimental to the, the workplace environment. Your time City is manager. Up. Thank you. Promise, did you have something? Sí, um, yo sé que a veces tengo muchas personas que se sientan aquí por hora, hasta, tras hora, tras hora y siempre espero durante mis últimos minutos para darle el agradecimiento que ustedes se sientan aquí hora tras hora viendo que sus hijos son parte del, de lo que estamos teniendo aquí. Queremos traer la cultura y la población que sepa I que apologize. no importa I lo que esté don't aquí. What she's I'm sorry, don't interrupt me. Um, la señora alcalde desafortunadamente toma el tiempo para bloquear lo que tengo que decir la comunidad que no entiende el inglés y también hablo señas, pero me ha cortado en muchas ocasiones que esa todavía no la he tratado. Pero cuando usted llega aquí o me está mirando en video, usted tiene la oportunidad de llenar algo como esto por tres minutos, ponerse acá arriba y dar su opinión. No importa lo que usted quiere decir, quiere cantar una canción, quiere leer la Biblia, quiere decir qué tan malos o qué tan buenos somos, esa es la oportunidad que tenemos como personas, votemos o no votemos, es nuestro derecho humano bajo la constitución de los Estados Unidos. Y nunca deje que nadie le aporte intimidación, porque yo soy la primera que me bajo con usted y le, le ayudo el soporte para que usted sepa que no solamente habla el español, yo le voy a hablar el inglés y yo le traduzco con muchísimo gusto. So what I'm saying is I have a lot of times where we have a couple of individuals that sit hours amongst hours just waiting, not understanding what it is that's coming across. And I'm here thoroughly to support you. If you have to come and do your three minute speech and you fill this out by placing your names, I will get up from the dais, I will support you where you're at and I will interpret for you. And that's my goal to make you have that power in that voice, not to be intimidated. You have individuals up here that are willing to hear your voice. And this is your right to be here, whether you are a person that can or cannot vote, you still have representation up here with our local city government. And so that's what I was saying. So when, um, when we ask for decorum and professionalism and you have the chair, Ms. Gloria, interrupting, that just shows the lack of respect that we have in our leadership. And so it's, it's shameful to say that Mrs. Jones, she's, she's very uh, ethical when it comes to talking and very nice, but she fails to understand that she should also target when there is an interruption, you and that just seconds. breaks it off. Entonces, de todas maneras, me interrumpió, no le hace, ustedes tienen el poder en mí, hablo español, hablo señas, los idiomas que yo pueda, yo siempre los voy a usar, a usar aquí, aunque le guste o no le guste, vamos a seguir batallando el 5 de mayo, lo vamos a hacer, vamos a seguir la batalla, seas negocio pequeño o grande, yo estoy aquí para aportar todo lo que necesitas y estoy aquí para ser elegida para se seguir a tu lado. Muchas gracias por todo. I just want to say, I, I'm just trying to follow the decorum. There's nothing else before the council. This meeting is adjourned.